Mrs. North, starring Barbara Britton and Richard Denning. Darling, wake up. You're dreaming. Put down the jewels. Drop the gun. Step over the body and put your hands up. Pam. If you don't, I'll tell my husband Jerry and... Pam. You killed her and you'll have to hang for it. Pam, darling, wake up. You're dreaming. Come on. Oh. I guess I was dreaming. You woke me up in the best part. Yeah, I know. I killed somebody and I had the jewels. Uh, no, no, it wasn't you. It was a fat man with, with, with large feet and a beret and a checkered coat like yours. You're all dressed. You're up to something you don't want me to know about. Oh, now I remember. That's why I was asleep here on the divan. So I could catch you so you couldn't go without me. Darling, I told you I can't take you with me. Why not? I've told you a thousand times we've been over this and over it. A training camp is no place for a woman. Sneaking out in the middle of the night. I was not sneaking out. It's 4 a.m. and I didn't want to wake you. Art Davis is picking me up and... and... Art Davis is a sports writer. And you're thinking of doing a book on Vince McKay, the most colorful prize fighter since John L. Sullivan. Yes, and we have a six-hour drive in which we intend to lay out the whole format for the book without distractions. And I would be a distraction. Oh, darling, you'll always be a distraction to me. Even when you're 70. A lovely distraction. Oh, Jerry. What a line. <laughs> Why are you reeking of perfume if you're going to a training camp? Thanks for the vote of confidence. I bought you a present. A big, beautiful bottle of perfume, and I just broke it. Oh. It's my favorite. You broke my bottle of perfume. I hope Vince McKay takes a good sock at you. <laughs> well, Davis. Hi, Whitey. So you finally found your way up here, huh? Yeah, so what kind of weather do you call this? Uh, it's been like this for a couple of days. That's why we had to move inside. Oh, this is Whitey Malone, Vince McKay's manager. Nice My friend Jerry North. How are you? He's the publisher I was telling you about. Oh, so you're the man who's going to publish a story about Vince McKay, huh? Well, I'm thinking about it. <laughs> Boy, that'll really swell his head out to here. Oh, he's pretty cocky, huh? Yeah. Of course, sometimes I can make a really great fighter, you know. <laughs> Wonder where he is. Hey, Vince! Vince! Listen, McKay, I'm telling you for the last time, stay away from Ruth. Hey! Look who's giving orders. Eh? And speaking of orders, see that you have my steak medium rare today. Or is that too much for you to remember? I never forget a thing. And you know what I mean. How's that? Okay, okay. Beat it, Joe. I'm sick and tired of your belly aching. And quit preaching to me about Ruth. I'm not preaching. I'm warning you. Ruth's a good kid. She deserves a better break than getting mixed up with a no-good dame chasing mug like you. That's just a sample of what you'll get next time you stick your ugly neck out. Hey. 
Gee, that Vince doesn't pull any punches even when he's sparring, does he? He doesn't spar, he murders. What a guy. I could have made champ once myself. Yeah, we know, Swifty, we know, we know. Attaboy, Vince, give me a one-two. See? How about that? That wasn't in the books. Ten to one, he spotted some tomato. Uh-oh, some tomato. No, oh, I might have known. You wouldn't, Head. What's going to happen if there's a blonde at ringside Thursday night? Get lost. I'll teach. You leave yourself wide open, you deserve a lesson. Try to make me look like a chump. Listen, take it easy. He's only a sparring partner. You cracked up, has been. Uh, ask him how he likes the view from there. Ah, you're a killer, boy. A real killer, champ. Ah, you're really punching in there, boy. <laughs> Hello, Art. Hi. Now, like I said before, who sent for you? Well, I, I just got such a longing for some fresh mountain air. You're right about that fighter. And, oh, he looked terrific on television. <laughs> How do you like that? A knockout punch is no longer enough. Now you got to be photogenic. <laughs> you can put that in your book, Jerry. So you really figure, Vince, to win the elimination about Thursday night, huh? Oh, me and everyone else. You can't get better than 12 to 5 on him now. <laughs> then he has this one more fight before he challenges the champion. That's the idea. You see the trouble a beautiful dame can cause? This dame happens to be Mrs. North, my wife. <laughs> well, ain't that nice. I hear you want to write a book about me. Possibly. Now, you supply the ideas and I'll do the writing. What's the matter? You think I couldn't write it myself? You think you could? What's there to it? You can talk, you can write. <laughs> Tell that to some of your temperamental authors, darling. <laughs> Ricky, what's the idea trying to flatten Vince? No reason, Doc. You see an opening, you let it go. Not when you're only a sparring partner. What's it to you what I do to him? What do I know? You got rocks in your head. It's just that you need the job, Rick. It's the first time this has been out of hock for a long time. I know, I know. I've been getting bad breaks. But I'll get a big fight. And a real one like the old days. Yeah, You'll see. Sure, sure. Well, until you get that big fight, just remember, pull your punches. And you just remember, doll, you're still my wife. Joe, are you feeling better? Yeah, Ruthie, I'm okay. What were you and Vince fighting about, anyway? Say, those pies look great. Why do you make all apple? Joey, I asked you a question. All right, I'll answer it. I told him to keep away from you. Well, look, I can take care of myself. Can you? Joey, I don't like you keeping tabs on me this way. I've got every reason to keep you from making a fool of yourself. Ruthie, you, you know I'm crazy about you. I only got you this job so I could have you near me. You're so crazy about me, you don't want me to be happy, hmm? Happy? You and Vince McKay? Like a kid playing with a firecracker. Joey, if you hate him so, why are you here? I came here because Whitey needed me. He knew I knew Vince and thought I could keep him straight. Ruthie, listen to me. I got a nice chunk of dough saved up. We'll go away. The coast, Mexico, anywhere as you say. Oh, no, Joey, don't. I'm sorry. I like I know I'm just a guy with an ugly kisser, but I treat you good, real good. Yeah, I guess you would, Joey. And Joey, it's not an ugly kisser. It's just that... It's just that you're so steamed up about Vince McKay, you can't see me for dust. Is that it? sports writing for more years than I care to remember, and I've seen them all. Uh, Dempsey, Tunney, Benny Leonard, but this boy. So I'm a big blowhard, so what? Say, that might make a good title for the book, The Big Blowhard. Sure, pal. That's what swells the gate receipts. 
99% of the people come to see me lose. Only me, I ain't never lost one yet. You mean you've never been defeated, not even once? Well, yeah, maybe once. What happened, Vince? Who was it? Well, let's say that I wasn't outclassed, but I sure was outweighed by 2,000 pounds. What? <laughs> You see, I'm fighting down in Mexico one time. I get a load of the bullfights. Well, it looks to me like all you gotta have is a little footwork. So I learned the ropes a bit. And one day I step in the arena with this bull. Oh, man, he's a big son of a gun. I start teasing him, see? Like this. Well, what happened? Well, all of a sudden I went sailing through the air like I'm jet propelled. Now, land right smack in the lap of the prettiest scenery in all Mexico. And thus endeth your bullfighting career. Yeah, and thus, uh... Yeah, thus ended my... I'll see you all later. I gotta take a shower. Well, there goes your Vince McKay. What do you think about him? I think I'll change that title of the book to I Love Vincey. <laughs> well, what about me? Uh-uh, not today. You know you're glad I'm here. Well, oh, maybe a little bit. Oh, wait a minute. This is worse than listening to McKay's bragging. Come on, let's find some room. <laughs> is it good? Good. Hmm, baby, you're my girl. Am I, Vince? What do you think? Prove it. <sighs> it was practically a written guarantee. Yeah, I'm nuts about you. Say, honey, you think you can sneak me a piece of that apple pie? <laughs> I'll try. After we uh, get back to town, things will still be the same. We'll still be together, I mean. Yeah, nice, nice. You mean it, don't you, Vince? I said so, didn't I? What do I got to do, stand on my head for a lousy piece of apple pie? You dames, you're all alike. Where you been? Nowhere. You know, I might as well have a wife as to be stuck with you. That jerky dame's been feeding you pastry again. You got chocolate in your teeth. So what? So I'll fire her, that's what. Forget it, I'll weigh in at the right weights. Not sneaking off eating dessert, you won't. Anyway, Ruthie's just a kid. Why don't you leave her alone? Look, I'll leave her alone when I'm good and ready. Nobody tells me what to do. Listen, big man, this is Whitey Malone. The guy who picked you up when you were scrubbing floors in a lousy beanery. Yeah, and pulled yourself right out of the small time up into the big time with me, Vince McKay. So don't give me that I made you what you are today routine. Besides, it's just like they say in the newspapers. Me, I'm another John L. Sullivan. There's just one big difference. Everybody liked John L. Sullivan. There's a new kid coming up, looks pretty good. I seen him fight a couple of weeks ago. Unorthodox, but great. Oh, look what you did. Oh, I'm so sorry. If I'm you keep your mind on you working off him. Cut a doll. You know, I'd better fire that girl before we get into real trouble. Maybe your title should be the big Casanova. Yeah. <laughs> Joe, take over for me, will you? Sure, kid, sure. Just take it easy. What's the matter, kid? Catch one on the chin? Yeah, Cupid hit her for a full count. And the reason? Why, me. Who else? <laughs> That's my boy. Look, you stay in the ring. I'll handle the kitchen talent. Oh, boy, you're killing oh, me. Oh, Vince, knock it off. Joe, go back to your job. Yeah, well, some of these might make good illustrations for the book. Well, help yourself. Oh, here's one in a bullfighting costume. You like that one? She did, too. Prettiest senorita in all Mexico. Mmm, she was the kind of doll I could be nuts about. Oh, is there another kind? Hey, your old lady's pretty quick on the uptake. Oh, she's a doll, a real living doll. How about a couple of fast rounds in the moonlight? You got yourself a main event. <laughs> oh, hey. To my love, from Sharon. The future Mrs. Vince McKay. Why, Vince, you didn't tell us you were married. I'm not. But this one almost hooked me. Oh, uh, Ricky wants a glass of milk. 
Vince. Look, the milk's in the icebox. Vince, I had to talk to you. Not now. Look, I don't want any more trouble with Rick. He's asleep in the cabin. Vince, you've got to level with me. Tuesday, when you head back, back to town, it, it isn't all over between us, is it? Look, kid, you're the one that's married. Me? I don't have to account to anybody. I'm as free as the breeze, and that's just the way it's going to stay. Vince, honey, you've got to listen to me. All right. You've got to. All right. Look, kid, you should have known better than take a big clown like me serious. No, 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 no. Look, Rick, it's not at all like you think. No? How is it? Ricky, listen to me. Don't start anything. You start it, and I'll finish it. No! in the back of the cabin. I don't want any more trouble with you. Let me see your hands. Oh, they're all right. They're not broken. How stupid can you get? Who are you calling stupid? You! Mixing up with dames slugging bare-fisted before your big fight? Ah, oh, button up your lip. I got news for you. Your troubles are over. Because me, I'm signing up with a new manager. Are you nuts? Nicky Ross, a real big shot. Nick? Why, Vince, you can't do it. Oh, don't worry. You'll get your cut out of Thursday's fight. But four years, Vince. Four years we've been together, planning every step of the way. Don't that mean anything to you? Oh, stop. You're breaking my heart. Don't you have any contract with Vince? No, just a handshake. You spend a lifetime training kids who look good but never quite make the big show. And finally you get your hands on a real fighter and you see a chance to get in the big time. Well, he's not going to get away with it. He'll not step into that ring Thursday night. I'll stop him. I'll stop him. Hey, Vince, it ain't true you're leaving Whitey. No, who says it ain't? Yeah, but me. I go along while you go, huh, Vince? You couldn't get by without me, huh, Vince? Ah, it might break me up, but I think I could manage. It's a whole new deal, Swifty. I take nothing with me but my toothbrush. Besides, you better stick with Whitey. He's liable to promote you a real big fight. start for home. I'm waiting for the lowdown on Vince's signing with Nicky Ross. It may have been bluffing, but if it's true, I got an exclusive. Hey, Whitey, what's with his reflexes? What's the matter with you? What's the matter? I didn't lay a glove on him. He's dead. Art, you better call the sheriff. So you came up here about a book? That's right. I can vouch for that, Sheriff. According to all the stories I'm able to piece together, apparently everybody up here hated this Vince McKay. It's common knowledge that you and he weren't good friends. A guy takes a job as a spy partner. Doesn't mean to say we gotta be a buddy-buddy. You had a fight last night right here in the kitchen. You said you were going to kill him. I was just bumping my gums. What are you fighting about? What's I got to do with it? Answer my question. The autopsy showed a trace of rat poison. Bottle hasn't been found yet. Everybody will be held on suspicion until he's able to clear himself. What happened between you and Vince McKay? Ricky's protecting me, Sheriff. About the fight, he's my husband, and he did what any man would if he thought his wife was, well, fooling around with another man. But he didn't kill him. Why should he? Only last night we made up. We were going to go away today and, and get a new start somewhere. I love Ricky. And as for that thing with Vince, well, well, it was crazy. Of course it was crazy. He didn't care about her. I was the one he wanted. Ask anybody. Ruth, you're excited. Sheriff, she never had anything to do with McKay. He's lying. I was the only one he wanted, the only one! Oh, shut up. What are you trying to do, hang yourself? He was a no-good guy anyway. 
It's a man with the best motive for murder in this room. What? Love and jealousy. <laughs> Sheriff, I'll take her to my room and quiet her. Are you true with us, Sheriff? Yeah. Stick in your cabin. How about me? You can all go, but don't leave the premises. Uh, Mr. Malone, I want to talk to you. Mr. Malone, McKay didn't tell you until last night that he had signed with the new manager, did he? No, sir. After all the years that you were together and the work you had done, it must have been quite a shock to you. Well, sure. Such a shock that you kept saying over and over that he'd never enter that ring Thursday night. That doesn't mean I'd kill him to stop him. What does it mean? Well, it means I was going to complain to the Boxing Commission about Nicky Ross and his unethical tactics. Mr. Davis, you know something about the fight game. Could he have stopped McKay that way? Possibly. Look, Sheriff, I'm beat, what with the whole world caving in on me, but I'm leveling with you. I didn't kill Vince McKay. Now, that's my story. You can take it or leave it. This is a sticker. Anybody could have done it, yet nobody will say they did. Sheriff, like I said before, what about Joe? All right. What about Joe? Well, everyone knows he's crazy about Ruth, and yet she was in love with Vince. Jealousy, huh? Could be, could be. And if it is, it's the first real motive I've run into. Want me to find him for you so you can have a talk with him? Anybody has sworn you in as a deputy? No, I was just trying to help. You seem to need it. I'll talk to Joe when I decide to. Let's see what you mean. Guess that'll teach him to mind his own business, huh? I'd still like to talk to him. Jerry, look here. What? Joe, love from your kid sister, Sharon. So? Well, don't you recognize her? It's the girl in Vince's picture, the future Mrs. Vince McKay. Of course. Joe's kid sister, Sharon, and Vince brushed her off. Now, you see why we had to come here? Come on, let's find that sheriff. Getting out of here right now. But we can't leave. I parked my jalopy down the road. I left it there just in case. Just in case of what? Joey, what is it? They searched my room and they found what they were looking for. But don't worry. I know these roads like the back of my hand. But they found. That was the poison bottle. Oh, Joey, no. Ruth, I came here at first because. Because I wanted to kill him for what he did to Sharon. Then I couldn't. Not at first, but after I found out about him and you, I couldn't help it. Joey, you can't keep running. You've got to give up. You did enough to me already. I'm not taking any rap, you hear? You don't open that door, I'll shoot the lock off. Come on, let's go out the back way. Don't try it, Joe. There are deputies out there with shotguns. Stick him up, Joe. All right, let's go. Let her go, Joey. You can't get away with it. If you want me, you'll have to shoot through her to get me. I'm warning you, I'll shoot if I have to. Well, Joey, let me go. No, Joe. Careful, Mr. North. What happens if you do get away with this? I've got plans made for the two of us. You love Ruthie, don't you, Joe? Sure, I love her. You killed Vince because he hurt your sister, but you want to drag Ruth into a manhunt. Hiding in rocks, living like an animal. What kind of a love is that? Well, you are no better than Vince Why McKay. You hold it, Joe. All right. I guess this is it. Thanks, Mr. North. It's a good fight on television. You want to watch it? No, I do not. <laughs> Here's your milk. Thank you. We have better fights here at home. <laughs> Anything else you'd like before I turn in? Mm-hmm. Hmm. A nice unmarried kiss. A pleasure. How was that? <sighs> Married. I never knew anything legal could be so good. <laughs> Mr. 
Mr. and Mrs. North is presented by Colgate Chlorophyll Toothpaste. Colgate Lather Shaving Cream. And Vito Spray Deodorant. Directed by Ralph Francis Murphy. A John W. Loveton production. Produced by Federal Telefilm. Starring Barbara Britton and Richard Denning. Next week, don't miss Mr. and Mrs. North in Murder on the Midway. For great entertainment, tune in Strike It Rich and the Colgate Comedy Hour every week.